Throughout this guide, I use a cosmetic correction template and load it into WBPP to demonstrate various configurations. But I didn't actually spend a moment to talk about cosmetic correction. It's not really WBPP, but it is such an integral part of the configuration space. And I would argue it is absolutely fundamental to a processing workflow in PixInsight that I think I should highlight it. So let me repeat that. It, uh, my assertion is that you should always use cosmetic correction. It solves a number of difficulties that people often uh, run into when they're processing data. Everything from not aligning images to properly, which I have an entire video on in on YouTube about that, um, and other things where you might have weird little patterns in your images, or little clumps of uh, little clusters of pixels and things when you integrate your images. All of that goes away. And all of those problems um, go away when you use cosmetic correction. So that's how important it is. Let's actually look at the process and then we can see how it is incorporated in WBPP. Uh, cosmetic correction is here. I am going to highlight only two aspects of this tool. There are actually three, depending upon how you count. I'm not going to talk about the defect list. This is where you specify in a custom way where there are pixels or columns or things like that you need to, you need to correct. What I'm going to talk about are these two methods. So when we use cosmetic correction, there are two basic methods that we can employ. One is this auto detect method, which I'll explain. And the other is um, using a master dark. But before I even talk about that, I want to just mention something that uh, you might be curious about. When you use cosmetic correction, this is a process. Normally what you do is you load the files in here and you set this up, then you run it on the files and then it'll output uh, accordingly the data. And typically, or normally what you need to do in that standalone way is you need to tell it if you're using a color filter array, if you have a one-shot color camera sensor or data. But when we use this template with WBPP, we don't need to check the box because we're telling WBPP in the, in the user interface, there's a checkbox there, as you know, that we're going to tell it whether the images in the light frame group or, or flats, uh, whether they are um, color images or not. So by virtue of the fact we're doing it there, we don't need to do it here. So all we need to do is set it up with the proper parameters here to identify hot pixels in images. So first, let me explain the one that I usually use. It's the easiest thing to use, which is the auto detect method. The auto detect method, I'm just going to say it in words how it works. I show in much more detail and perhaps even better clarity on my website, in my videos at adamblockstudios.com, how these things work and uh, graphically. I mean, I show some really cool examples. Uh, but just in words, how auto detect works is that um, an image is scanned, it goes, PixInsight goes and looks at every single pixel, and it looks at all of those pixels' neighbors. If the pixel in question is much brighter by some degree, based on the sigma value, compared to all of its neighbors, then it'll be substituted by some value calculated by those neighbors. That's how a uh, hot pixel is corrected. So hot pixels are basically, you know, bright pixels. You, they're normal uh, aspects of using any kind of digital imagery where these sensors, some of the pixels collect charge more quickly than others. And even when you try to calibrate them, they still um, are lit up. You can still see them above the bulk of the other pixels. So this is a correction that's going to take care of those to a level, a threshold that we, we say is significant. And that is what we're saying right here. So with what I've just described, when you scan an image and you look at every pixel, you are looking at the values of those pixels, which means you're actually looking at values that correspond to sky values, star values, galaxy values, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, one of the caveats, the warnings of using this method is that if you have undersampled data where your stars are literally the sizes of pixels, then this method can sometimes detect the very centers of those stars, which are basically one pixel in size. It seems like they're hot pixels to this algorithm. So um, this might not be the best method for undersampled images. I find it's fine as long as you have dithered data. That is, if you've shifted the images 
um, from one frame to another, all of that averages out if it does affect any stars. Um, and then the integrated images look just perfectly fine. But if you have constrained yourself <laughs> to using undersampled images and they're not dithered, then this other method using the master dark using a master dark frame to identify hot pixels might be a better way to go. I'll talk about that in one moment. So I've given you what the warning is, but in most cases I think that this method works fine. What's nice about this method is that we can control the strength of it by this one number. Um, I explain what this number means and where it comes from in my videos. I'm not going to do that here, other than to say the smaller the number, the more aggressive. Uh, the algorithm is to identify the hot pixels. Um, a, a value of two here is quite aggressive, very aggressive. So the default is actually quite nice. A three is a nice one. Cold sigma. It's very unusual to find large numbers of pixels that are dead or somehow not responsive that are darker than the all of the neighboring pixels surrounding them. So the cold sigma, uh, I generally don't even employ at all. It's just the hot sigma, the hot pixels that I'm most interested in trying to you know, take care of here. This method is independent of image size. This is one of the other benefits of it, is you can apply this one template. If we create a template here, we can apply this one template to uh, any binning, because it doesn't matter if you're scanning an image. It doesn't matter if the image is binned or unbinned or whatever it is. So if I call this CC, we'll say auto method, we can make a template just like that. Now, if instead we use this other method, we would be using a dark frame and we actually have to give it a dark frame. So let me just show you a dark frame, or maybe I'll show you two here. Uh, so I have a dark frame. Where are my darks? So here is um, one dark and here's the other dark. One is binned one by one, the other is binned two by two. So let me close the rejection stuff here and you can just see the two images. So here's one of them. And here is the other. I'll just show you, I mean, I can show them both to you, but these two images are different sizes and you'll see why that is important in a moment. So this is the, uh, the binned one by one, this is the smaller one binned two by two. If we zoom in, you can certainly see what are the hot pixels. They, now this is a long exposure, a 1200 second exposure. So we'll see them. Uh, they are much brighter than the bulk of the pixels that are surrounding them, right? And so there's some number of them here. And uh, what we get to do is we can point at one of these. I'll just do the bend one by one here. Is this the dark? Yep. I'll point at one of these. And then what it's doing now is it is examining, though it's on the disk, but it's examining this particular dark frame right here that I have open. If we enable this, anyway, then you can slide the sliders here. These three sliders are doing the same thing. They're coupled. You can either look at the quantity, you can specify a quantity, you can specify a sigma level that implies a quantity of hot pixels, or you can specify a level that, again, it, it, it is going to be at a particular sigma value, which will imply a, a number of them. It doesn't matter. Pick one of these things that you'd like and move to change the number of hot pixels that are going to be uh, corrected um, in the image, because that's what it's finding here. So I'd like to show you what that means. If I did this, this says that there are 8,000 pixels, which by the way is a very small number. In this frame here, there are uh, 16 million pixels. So 8,000 is a very small fraction of pixels that are going to be corrected, actually. But just to show that to you, it says 0.037 is a, is a threshold, right? I should be able to put that threshold here. Let me move this. If I use range selection and I say my, my upper limit here is the same as 0 0.03, what did I say, 7? And we apply that to here. And let me zoom in. These are the hot pixels that it's basically detecting in this frame. So that's the number, now it's, you can't see them when I zoom out, there are a ton of them, uh, but that's the amount that it's detecting in this frame here. And if I wanted to detect more, of course, I can just move this around. So uh, 
I would recommend for an image like this, I'd recommend that you could put it down to a sigma of something like, you know, two or three or something. It says that the number of pixels in this dark, now these are fixed in location, are 26,000 of them. That's a very small fraction of the total number of pixels. So that's a fine number for a frame like this, I think. And then I'll be employing this, but I'll make this as a, that's a template, but this one I'm gonna call CC dark, and this has been one by one, right? And if I point this at uh, the other frame, which is the other dark frame, the bin two by two frame, let's be sure this is that one, yes. Then I can use the similar kind of thing uh, here. Let's see what, what threshold, that's a small number. Whatever, I choose some number, some amount, and then I make another here. So this one is gonna be CC dark frame uh, bin two by two. Right. Close this, close this. And now I can finally show you in WBPP how we might take advantage of this fact of using these different templates of cosmetic correction. So I'm gonna load some interesting, it's actually from the same data, some interesting thing here. I explain this in a subsequent video, so don't worry about the fact that I'm doing that thing I just did. What I wanted to show you is that for each frame group now, we could either apply the automatic method, which is independent of size, and I would just apply to all frames for cosmetic correction. It's only on this one right now, but if I apply to all, it gets set to all of them. Or if I wanted to use the dark frame method, and I explain again why in more detail in my videos, but if I wanted to, I could instead say, let's just use the binned one on the binned one here because it needs to match that dark frame for that binning. And then these guys, I'm gonna say bin two, but now I'll be, I didn't press that correctly. Um, let's put this back to bin one, sorry. And then here we set the others to bin two. And now we have different cosmetic correction templates being applied to different groups. This was not possible in the past, but it is now possible in WBPP. So there you have it. That was the whole thing about cosmetic correction. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the process and how you can take advantage of it here in WBPP by basically creating custom templates to accommodate different kinds of data types that you might have um, being processed in your WBPP session. Thanks a lot.